Hi there, in today's video, I'm going to share with you 7 reasons why you should switch from Jupyter Notebooks to Jupyter Lab. It's appalling to me that so many online Python courses are still using Jupyter Notebooks to teach Python and data science. I just don't get it. Let me tell you why. First of all, you may or may not know it already, Jupyter Lab is the latest web-based interactive development environment for notebooks, code, and data. Installing Jupyter Lab is very simple via Conda or Pip. So what makes Jupyter Lab a much better tool than the classic Jupyter Notebooks? Here are some of the reasons why, and I believe some of them will blow your mind. If you're ever fed up with having to switch between different tabs all the time just to view the root directory or to create a new file in Jupyter Notebooks, I hear you. And this is one of the key differences that Jupyter Lab will make in your data science life. It brings the classic notebooks, text editor, terminal, and directory viewer all under one view. It makes everything more efficient for you and creates an unified experience that you are bound to love. Now you can work on your Jupyter Notebook, interact with the terminal, and write on your Markdown file, all at the same time. Number two is viewing CSV file is so much better. You may have noticed that we can only view CSV files as text files in Jupyter Notebooks, but in Jupyter Lab, this is a piece of cake. You may notice that we are viewing a data file with almost 3 million rows without any glitch. So next time, if you can't open a CSV file in Excel just because it's more than 1 million rows, you know where to look. And not only CSV, you can also view PDF files, pictures, and markdown files. That's very convenient. Number three, and definitely one of my favorites, inside Jupyter Lab, you can create a second view for your notebook and put the two views side by side for comparison. The good thing is that any change you make to either of the views will also be reflected in the other and will be saved in the notebook. I find this functionality very useful when my notebook becomes bigger and bigger and I have to scroll back and forth a lot. For example, if I want to select certain columns from a data frame but don't remember exactly their names, so instead of printing the data frame again and again or scrolling up to where I actually printed it out, I just open the data frame in another view. This prevents me from writing redundant code and also saves me a lot of time scrolling. Number four is an extension of number three that we just talked about, but this time we can split the view even further with just some drag and drop. Now you can view and work on several notebooks and files simultaneously. I just love how flexible everything is and it really feels like a real IDE, and I'm in control of how I want to view stuff. Honestly, I don't miss at all painfully switching between tabs all the time like I used to do when working with Jupyter Notebooks, because sometimes I do unconsciously switch to YouTube instead of switch to my notebook. Number five is that you can actually drag the cells to rearrange them. This is not possible in classic Jupyter Notebooks, and that's what often annoys me the most when cleaning up and rearranging my notebook just so it makes more sense to the audience. Now, this will blow your mind. You can actually drag a cell from one notebook to another one in the split view, and that's how you can copy a cell from one notebook to another. You probably don't usually need to do that, but if you do, that's pretty neat. Number six is code consoles. If you want to test out a piece of code or check out what a function returns, we usually turn to code consoles because it's the most simple way to run code. Code consoles are really the place designed for testing code because of the interactivity they provide. In Jupyter Lab, all you have to do is right-click anywhere on your notebook and select New Console for Notebook. Then you can head to the Code Console and play with your code here. Number seven is simultaneous preview for Markdown. Quite often, you would want to share your data science project with the community or simply to document what you have done. In Jupyter Notebooks, it's quite frustrating to write Markdown because you have to run the cell again and again just to see how the file looks and if you got the right syntax. In Jupyter Lab, you can preview your Markdown file by right-clicking anywhere on your file and select Show Markdown Preview. And now you can see your document being updated live as you are typing. This feature is extremely convenient and will save you a lot of time when writing your documents. So that's a little bit of my rambling, how much I love Jupyter Lab and I think you should really give it a try and see how it improves your data analysis workflow in Python or your Python learning experience. It's definitely one of the best things that I have done to improve my productivity in Python. Now you know you have an amazing tool for your next project. I'll see you next in this video where I talk about how to build an awesome data portfolio project. 
Hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.